quiet, numbskulls. I'm broadcasting. <laughs> Everybody. Welcome to another edition of Medical Marijuana Radio. This one is for Saturday, the 13th of May, 2017. I'm your host, Larry Love, and we're here every week to bring you the latest information on medical cannabis and uh, adult use of cannabis from all over the globe. This week, our guest will be Ben Barreras from Herbal Edibles here in Albuquerque, uh, New Mexico. We're going to talk about uh, uh, a very important story that I've, I've sort of been on lately, and that's not using uh, vape pens that have uh, additives in it to help it uh, combust, like uh, um, MCT oil, or vegetable glycerin, uh, PEG, or, or propylene glycol. Uh, those things are not good for you, and we're going to play a, a clip in a minute uh, from about a year ago from the cannabis in, uh, uh, up in uh, Denver. But we'll be talking with Ben from Herbal Edibles about the cartridge that he makes that just has terpenes in it and, uh, and the cannabinoids. Uh, no foreign matter that can hurt you. So we'll talk with Ben at the second half of the show. But uh, first, as always, I've got news for you. Yes, I've got news for you, and uh, we're going to start off uh, in Florida, and we're going to uh, play some stuff about Florida today as well. Uh, this is from Sunshine State News. Defiant medical marijuana vendor is selling the smokable product. Now, smokable product is not legal uh, in Florida. Um, and this is from uh, sunshinestatenews.com. Even while Florida lawmakers have insisted that they do not want patients to smoke pot, cannabis, uh, one of the state's seven licensed medical marijuana vendors on Tuesday began selling whole flower cannabis. Florida laws bans patients from smoking the substance, but doesn't prohibit vendors from selling marijuana buds meant to be used in vaporizers. Uh, but which also can be smoked in joints, pipes, and other delivery devices. Um, True Leave, one of these seven licensed marijuana operators in Florida, started selling whole flower product on Tuesday, just days after the lawmakers failed to reach an agreement on a measure to carry out voter-approved constitutional amendment legalizing marijuana for patients with a broad swath of debilitating conditions. True Leave uh, CEO Ken Rivers told the News Service of Florida on Wednesday her company was, excuse me, has sold whole leaf products in different forms, all designed to be ingested by vaporizers for nearly a year. Those products, however, were ground up unlike new bud-like products that can be smoked. Can you imagine they have to sell ground up? Not going to last long. Quincy-based uh, True Leaves' new product, first sold on Tuesday, comes in canisters designed for use with vaporizer pens, but patients can easily use the substance in other ways, such as joints, bongs, or pipes. Consumption method, methods uh, off-limits under the state law. So, um, anyway, they're, they're using defiance um, to try to move their program forward. Uh, even though there's so many restrictions. But um, John Morgan, 
since we're on Florida, I'm going to skip ahead. But John Morgan is uh, someone who's been fighting in Florida and putting a lot, millions and millions of dollars up. He's, uh, uh, you know, for medical cannabis. And uh, so it's, it's really been crazy what's going on in Florida. So I'm going to let John Morgan uh, explain to you the, the current status of what's going on. They've been trying to get a, a special session going and so forth uh, to try to straighten out these, these problems. So here's John Morgan, who posted a video uh, a, a couple of days ago explaining uh, his position and uh, what they're going to do. Now, what happened in Tallahassee the last 60 days was people versus profit. Every lobbyist in the world were hired to work this issue. There were people from outside of Florida and inside of Florida who wanted licenses, who wanted to get in on the action to make money off of this issue. And these lobbyists battled back and forth to limit the number of licenses that the existing growers could have and to include new licenses and to bring even more growers and providers in. In the midst of all this, the one group that was forgotten were the patients, the people who are sick, the people who are dying, the people who are waiting, you. And at the last minute, last couple of weeks, I got word of what was going on and I was upset and disgusted. Look, who cares how many dispensaries one grower has? To cap a business, to me, is not capitalistic. How many grocery stores are there in Florida? In Florida right now, there are seven licenses, seven license holders. Now do yourself a favor, sit down with a piece of paper and write down on a piece of paper how many grocery stores there are in Florida. There's no caps on grocery stores. There's no caps on drug stores. There's no caps on gas stations. Free market enterprise allows competition. Competition is good for the patient, for the consumer. It makes prices go down. It makes quality of service go up. But up in Tallahassee, you had people who were trying to limit licenses and bring in new licenses. It was all about money in the end, and it was not about you, and it was not about what we did together. At the end of the day, here's what happened. They were trying to negotiate how many new licenses would come in, and they agreed on 10. So there would have been 17 licenses. But they couldn't agree on the number of dispensaries, which is ridiculous. Who cares? Once upon a time, there were tanning salons all over Florida. And then there weren't. There was laser hair removal all over Florida. Then there wasn't. Because the free market ferrets it all out. The cream rises to the top and the weak don't make it. So at the very end, they could not agree on the caps of dispensaries. The Senate wanted five and the House was willing to take 50 but wanted 100. For me, there should be no caps on capitalism. So here's what we, where we are. My hat is off to Richard Corcoran. There's things even in the bill they had that I don't like, like the lack of smoke. That's ridiculous. And if they pass it without smoke, I'll sue for that and win. Because in my amendment, it said smoking is not allowed in public places. So everybody understood that smoke was to be allowed. Just another act of the legislature ignoring the will of the people. But Richard Corcoran largely wanted to get this done. Where it fell short was in the Senate. Now look, I have an unbelievable amount of respect for Joe Negro, the president of the Senate. Good person, smart guy. I think Joe, in hindsight, probably wishes he'd done a deal. I spoke a lot to Bill Galvana, the incoming Senate president, and he wants to do a deal. And so today I want to speak to Rick Scott. We're on different political parties, but I consider him a friend and a person who's put the interest of Florida first and foremost. And so I'm calling on Governor Scott 
to call a special session. Look, all you need is just a few more minutes to get this thing done. President Negron's for it. I'm sure Corker would come back. But more importantly, it's their obligation, it's their duty to implement, not to send it to some bureaucrats and the Department of Health. I'm not mad at any lobbyist. Lobbyists make money lobbying. That's what they do. That's their job. So don't any lobbyist out there think that I'm upset with you. You were paid to get legislation through for your clients. But look, let's don't push any more blame around. Let's just step back a few steps, take a few deep breaths, and go forward for Florida. There are really sick people out there. You have no idea. I've met them. I've heard from them. I've called them. They've called me. They thanked me. Let's get this done. Let's come back to special session. Two or three days. Let's do what's right. Let's do the people's work. They sent you guys there for a reason. They sent you there to do their work. They trusted you. And with 71% of the vote, there's no doubt of the will of the people. Let freedom ring. Let capitalism prosper. Let's put people before profit. And let's go out and do this for the people of Florida. Thanks for listening. Again, that's uh, John Morgan who posted a video a few days ago uh, on his uh, Facebook page. Uh, staying in Florida for one more story. Um, Disney World lists marijuana as a prohibited item. So don't be going to Disney World. Well, I mean, don't be going if you're going to have marijuana on you, that's for sure. Now that medical marijuana is legal in Florida, there are lots of questions about where you can get it and use it. This is a, a new frontier. Attorney Matt Morgan fought to legalize medical cannabis and says he's not surprised private companies are setting their own regulations. Disney World has changed their website to make it clear no pot in the park. Marijuana is now listed specifically as a prohibited item on Disney's website. A company spokesperson tells me although some states have legalized marijuana for medicinal or recreational use, marijuana remains illegal under federal law. We are revising our rules to clarify that marijuana is not permitted on our property. And then the next question would be how diligent of a search will Disney do? Are they going to be digging through people's handbags to find that type of stuff? Morgan tells me he understands Disney doesn't want people smoking, but for some patients, using their medical marijuana means putting a drop of oil under their tongue. For instance, if somebody had a vaporizing pen in, in their purse, what makes that different than a pill of Oxycontin in their purse? And, and should people be treated differently? That's up to Disney to decide. Morgan says the Florida legislature needs to vote on medical marijuana regulations to clear up confusion. Law enforcement at this date really doesn't know how they're going to enforce it because the laws haven't been written. As for local medical marijuana dispensaries, we expect Orlando City Council to vote soon on new regulations. Amanda Crawford, West 2 News. Okay, now moving over to Canada, here's a short piece uh, about how in Canada, unions are now uh, offering medical cannabis coverage uh, to battle the opioid crisis. Of course, uh, we, we know how uh, cannabis really could be the answer for a lot of people. A local union is now offering cannabis products through its benefit plan. That's to discourage opioid prescriptions, according to Lyuna Local 625. You're always looking out for the health and welfare of your members on and off the job site and their families as well. Um, op opiates, we know what opiates do to the body. Uh, we also know that people take opiates and start taking opiates for good reasons due to pain and then for whatever reason get hooked, addicted. The Windsor Local announced the change after two years of consultations with pharmacies and suppliers. The expanded plan will only allow oil products with reduced THC for its members still on the job. Loblaw and Shoppers Drug Mart employees are also covered for medical marijuana. Can Assurance coming to a country and state near you soon, we hope. Uh, it certainly is, is a real medicine, so why shouldn't it be covered? Um, so, that being said, uh, Shona, Banda, Shona Banda was on my show a couple of years ago. She's a pioneer um, in using cannabis and, and the Rick Simpson type oil 
uh, you know, to, to help her Crohn's disease. And uh, she lives in a state that uh, uh, does not allow uh, cannabis. And her son was in school. We've talked about the story before. She got arrested because her son mentioned that her mother uses cannabis uh, for her health. And uh, there's a whole terrible thing going on with, with her. So the state uh, presented their expert witness against Shona Banda uh, just this week. And uh, here is this report. A Kansas woman who claims she needs medical marijuana for her condition was in court today. Shauna Banda is charged with possession and child endangerment. KSN Santiago Khan was in court and has the very latest from our Southwest Kansas newsroom. The judge heard from a potential witness that the prosecution wants to testify. Banda's expert witnesses were presented at a hearing last month where they defended the medical benefits of cannabis. Today, it was the assistant county attorney's turn. My uh, interest and specialties in the care of patients with inflammatory bowel diseases, namely Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. The heart of Banda's defense is showing that she needed cannabis oil to treat her Crohn's disease, which the state hopes to refute. So prosecutor Nick Verana first set up the doctor's expertise with Crohn's disease. Patients frequently do need medical therapy uh, on a long-term basis because uh, to date there is no cure for Crohn's disease. Then set up the importance of testing and approving drugs before use. The purpose of phase two trials is to con confirm that the product is safe and also to look for signs of efficacy or effectiveness. With the ultimate goal of arguing there's no justification for Banda's actions. In the field of gastroenterology, is marijuana used to treat Crohn's disease? It is not a standard treatment for Crohn's disease. Judge Wurst will make a determination at a later date which expert witnesses will be allowed to testify. In Garden City, Santiago Khan, KSN News. Because of the high profile nature of the case, 75 potential jurors will be called in in an attempt to qualify 39. The defense and prosecution can each challenge 13, leaving 12 jurors and an alternate. So we'll keep you updated on um, what's going on with uh, Shona. It's just, uh, it's just a shame. It, she was showing, you know, so much progress. Of course, she's living in the wrong state, um, and that's just not fair to uh, sick people to have to uh, up, you know, up root and and leave and go to another state for medical treatment. So this has to be worked out. Um, on the better side of things, although it was a, quite a uh, a ride, a medical marijuana distributor and their family. Uh, are getting their return of their money uh, from when they were busted, uh, you know, by the DEA. So here's this story. It's good. They, they got their, their stuff back. Eric, I was the CEO of MedWest Distribution here in San Diego. When we were raided by the Joint Narcotics Task Force, San Diego County, on January 28th, and about 28 armored, helmeted, automatic weapon-carrying uh, SWAT people came breaking down the front door with a sledgehammer to serve a search warrant and, you know, of course, terrorizing the two employees that were unfortunately there uh, in the morning. And they, you know, took all our computers and servers and records and uh, all the medical cannabis products, even ones that are legal in all 50 states because they're made from hemp. And the detective served uh, freezing procedures and then asset forfeiture proceedings against my account my kids' accounts, my mom's safe deposit box, my wife's account, um, and of course all the accounts from the business. Well, I didn't know anything about it until it happened to me, and it's an amazing dark secret of the American justice system that money is considered basically guilty until proven innocent instead of the other way around. So they come in and take everything, and then you have to go to court very expensively to try to prove why your money is innocent. So, uh, at least in this case, after after a fight, uh, they they did get their money back. But it, uh, you know, even with legalization in California for medical use uh, uh, and now recreational use, there's still a fight with uh, some local law enforcement and and even the DEA because they they're afraid they're losing. Well, they are losing, but they're losing their battle. But uh, you know, for years. People have claimed uh, re religious liberty uh, when it comes to cannabis, and, and it's, it's definitely uh, 
a religion for some people, and they use it as a sacrament and so forth. Um, this is a California man who was claiming religious liberty, played a role in his marijuana shipment that he was shipping to, I guess, another one of their sex. Sext. Sex. Yeah. Church member is arrested for attempting to carry a religious sacrament across state lines. This happened at the Stockton Airport last week, and the church leadership says the arrest should have never happened, and they're using their religion as a defense. New tonight, CBS 13's Drew Bolea has the unique and strange case. So every time one of them is in trouble, I will come to their rescue and say, Your Honor, charge me. Heidi Grossman is the head of the Oklavueja Native American Sugarleaf Rastafarian Church, based in Sacramento. We are the responsible party for every single one of our members on the sacrament. One of her church members was arrested at the Stockton Airport last week while transporting a religious sacrament to another church in Las Vegas. They were they were going to have a, for lack of a better way to put it, a grand opening celebration. According to church priest Eddie Lepp, the sacrament is marijuana. All of the sacrament involved in this was all blessed. Lepp says the man had a medical marijuana card and church membership forms. His luggage, a duffel bag of the church's prized possession. Uh, hundreds of pieces of uh, edible uh, cannabis type stuff uh, in the form of like gummy candies and chocolate. According to the San Joaquin County Sheriff's Office, marijuana is not protected under California law as a religious sacrament. I have never heard of it in, in my career. The Religious Freedom Restoration Act of 1993 protects peyote use for native religions, but marijuana is much more complicated. I think they have an argument to make. Whether they're going to succeed, I don't know. Attorney Jeff Kravitz says possessing small amounts of marijuana wouldn't be an issue since the passing of Prop 64, but large amounts transported by air lands in a different legal cloud. They would probably have to show why the transportation of it was necessary for them to practice their religious beliefs. A unique criminal case, cannabis, religion, and state lines, a legal result that could set a state precedent. Now, the man in question is Tony Lee Regato, and he will be arraigned tomorrow. He faces charges of possession with the intent to sell and transport marijuana. Grossman, as you heard in the story, has already filed some paperwork to have all of these charges thrown out. Okay, now, um, moving over back to uh, Denver, Colorado. Uh, you know, again... There's a lot of problems. We're doing something new, and I say we, the country, the, the world, about legalizing cannabis for adult use. So there's things that have to be worked out. Um, one of the problems, of course, in uh, Colorado is where, where can you smoke? Where are you permitted to smoke? So they've been trying to get uh, can of cafes going, and, and uh, they're having a bit of a problem. So here is a plan for a, uh, Denver, <laughs> a Denver social marijuana use permit uh, that actually gives a waiver for everybody who's using the cannabis. So here's this report um, from Denver, Colorado. The city has to plan to regulate this first-of-its-kind permit. Liz Gillardi joins us live with what this is going to look like. Liz? Shannon, when you hear the words pot club, maybe this isn't quite what you imagine. This business wants to combine books, records, and marijuana, but neighborhoods have a say, too. And we've got to see how it works out. So how will it actually work? We will be applying. Mutiny Information Cafe wants to be one of the first. But Jim Norris is not looking to turn his business into a full-time pot cafe. The shop's the focus. The fact that you can be high here, that's the, that's the bonus part. It's not so simple as toking up. Businesses will have to apply for a permit, work with surrounding neighborhoods, and they can't serve alcohol. Denver neighborhood associations are overall happy with the proposed rules. I think considering that there were two polar extremes, so to speak, uh, this has reached reasonable compromise. Uh, I think they did a good job. And if you want to experience these businesses on a higher level, you'll have to sign a waiver. I'm more than prepared to make sure that everything's you know, followed right to the letter of the law.
And here at Mutiny, they really only envision doing this maybe a couple times a month, possibly combining marijuana with live music or open night, mic night. This is not a done deal yet. There will be a public hearing on these rules in June, and businesses will likely be able to apply in July. Well, still so many questions. For one, Liz, um, would these clubs, say, be liable for a customer who leaves high and gets into an accident? Shannon, that's one of the questions that we're hearing a lot. What about liability? I had a chance to talk with an attorney. He says that's actually pretty tricky because these businesses will not be serving marijuana. They're only allowing consumption on site. But we also know that they'll have to develop some kind of plan and train employees. All right. It is a new world out there. Thank you, Liz Gilardi. And uh, in that new world, and this is what the alcohol industry is all worried about, and of course, this is why they have their fingers in the uh, cannabis industry uh, in other states, is that uh, cannabis will soon clobber beer sales, says the Wall Street Journal. Well, says, well, says Wall Street. Here we go. Wall Street says weed is about to seriously curb the country's appetite for alcohol. It's 420 and on marijuana's high holiday, one Wall Street analyst is warning clients that rising cannabis use has a negative impact on alcohol consumption. Cohen lowered its rating from Molson Coors to market perform from outperform, warning that beer sales would suffer because of a big rise in marijuana use. The firm lowered its price target by $15 to $105 because of that risk. And Cohen says that alcohol could remain under pressure for the next decade. Decade. The bottom line, pot is pushing out beer sales. And we all know that uh, there's way more statistically uh, uh, accidents due to drunk driving uh, that has nothing to do with uh, cannabis, just alcohol-related drunk driving and deaths. So uh, we're taking over. Uh, the mayor of Philadelphia says that legal pot should be sold in Pennsylvania liquor stores. Mayor Jim Kenney said marijuana should be legal for recreational use in Pennsylvania, and he believes it should be sold in state-run liquor stores. To me, we have the perfect system to set up the legal recreational use of cannabis through a controlled state store system, allowing the state to capture all the income now that's going to the underground. Kenny says putting sales completely under state control would maintain the integrity of the process. The hardest place to get served underage in Philadelphia when I was growing up was a Pennsylvania State Liquor Store. You could get a bartender to look the other way and give you a six-pack when you're, when you're 19, but when you went into a state store, they wanted to see your license. They didn't care. Kenny says revenue from pot sales could be directed to public education. Tom McDonald, WHYY News. Yeah, Kenny needs to uh, drop a dime and call uh, Susanna Martinez here in New Mexico and uh, let her know that maybe uh, cannabis would be good for education since we have one of the lowest ranked states it's a shame anyway um before we take a break i have a couple more uh, spots for you this spot is uh about uh cannabis infused female suppositories most women can agree periods are annoying and painful one company wants to turn painful periods into chill periods using marijuana a drug known for medicinal as well as recreational uses the weed capsule has been dubbed Foria Relief by the company Foria, which also launched a popular marijuana-infused sexual lubricant. The capsule is a small cocoa butter-based insert that is being marketed as a pain reliever for women's menstrual cramps. The tampon-sized vaginal suppository is blended with the 6 to 1 ratio of THC, oil concentrate, and CBD isolate, respectively. THC works by targeting the nerves to block out pain, while CBD acts as an anti-inflammatory and as an anti-spasmodic by treating muscle spasms that occur from menstruation and ovulation. Okay, and moving up to the other end of the body, THC may affect older brains in a surprising way. We've talked about this before. Uh, cannabis and THC could be the, the real next big thing for dementia and Alzheimer's patients. 
A toke a day might just keep the doctor away, or at least keep your brain younger. That's according to a new study out Monday in the journal Nature Medicine. Researchers at the University of Bonn and Hebrew University gave young and old mice THC, the stuff in marijuana that gets you high, and found something interesting. The younger mice conformed to stoner stereotypes. They struggled with simple tasks they could easily do sober. But in older mice, the exact opposite was true. They struggled while sober, but under the influence, they were as good as their younger, sober counterparts. The daily low dosage of THC also seemed to protect against and even reverse signs of aging in the brains of older rats. Previous research has shown that the brain's cannabis receptors might be related to brain health. The researchers want to explore the impact of THC on older human brains later this year. This is great information to uh, give to people that are still uh, stuck in the old stigma of cannabis can't be any good for you. It's going to burn your brain out. Uh, of course, is it controversial for, for younger people? Yeah, probably in a developing brain. But you know what? Uh, if, if this plant can really help uh, people with the deteriorating brains and actually cause neurogenesis and rebuild brain cells like they say it does, uh, this is going to be a great thing. All right, before we uh, take a quick little break, and we're going to talk to uh, Ben Barreras, um, here is a, a report from uh, about a year ago uh, from The Cannabis and uh, Ricardo Baca uh, about if you're vaping coconut oil, stop it because it could be dangerous. And uh, we're going to talk to Ben about uh, his product without any coconut oil or propylene glycol or PEG or vegetable glycerin. Uh, and, and here is this, and then we'll take a break, and then we'll talk to Ben. Super critical CO2 yes. extraction plus uh, a small amount, you say, of polyethylene glycol. Correct. So, so why is that uh, extraction methodology important and then mixing it with this mixing agent? Well, so CO2 for us is uh, really the best answer for you know creating the essential oils. Um, it, it, it's, it's a way that is... Um, you know, non-explosive, no um, hydrocarbon-based sure. um, uh, solvents, and uh, it just it's a cleaner, simple way to provide you know a clean, clean medicine. It's incredibly popular. Mm -hmm. um, what about the PEG, the polyethylene glycol? So for polyethylene, I'm glad you asked because uh, it's something I get asked a lot, and like anything. Uh, it's all about uh, responsible use. We use a very, very tiny amount mm -hmm. to provide a consistent experience for the vape cartridge. And is that primarily to allow the THC oil to atomize or vaporize Absolutely. because it doesn't really want to do that on what its own? What it also own. does is it lowers the vaporization temperature. And, oh, okay. and, and vaporization at high temperatures is where you run into problems. Right. What, what I would like to add just you know, as, a, as a final is that a lot of people uh, are using coconut oil. Right, right. And, and your website says that coconut oil is very dangerous when we, inhaled in we, this we fashion. We advise against it, you know, we advise against it because uh, all the studies that we have seen have pointed to coconut oil, even though it sounds good, as potentially you know, causing pneumonia. Oh, interesting, really. Mm -hmm. okay. it, can, it, can, it can cause infections in your lungs. So if you are using coconut oil, uh, don't. Stop immediately. It's, it's just not good for you. Fascinating. I know when one company locally here started doing it, it was kind of the rage for a couple months well, because people good. thought it was interesting it and good. healthy and, and they swish it around their mouths, whatever that thing is called. Mm -hmm. And I've done that before and I really liked it. And, you know, it's a good skin, skin product. It's mm -hmm. great to cook with. But is it safe for uh, vaporization? I feel like coconut oil is not. All right. Again, burning it, ingesting it into your lungs is not good. Having it uh, in a capsule, just regular organic coconut oil with uh, uh, cannabis oil is one of the greatest ways to, uh, to medicate uh, and one of the healthiest ways as well. So we're going to talk uh, more about uh, uh, vape pens and coconut oil and other additives, or why not just take your medicine straight without anything? You can do that. We'll be right back with Ben Barreras after this. It's all about the
Hi, this is Steve D'Angelo, and you are listening to Medical Marijuana Radio. And we're back, and online from Herbal Edibles, so you have Ben Barreras, and we're going to talk about uh, the cartridges that he's making for the uh, vape pens that don't have a PEG or VG or MCT in it. Welcome back again, Ben. How you doing, Larry? I'm, Glad I'm, to be back. Uh, I'm really happy to have you. So I've been on this kick where I've been uh, talking on uh, Facebook about how uh, people should be uh, smoking, especially in the in the uh, medical cannabis industry. Uh, vape pens do not have any additives in it that are not cannabinoids. Okay, no PEG, no vegetable glycerin, uh, no MCT. So uh, tell me about your product and why you decided not to use those other uh, uh, vapor vape ingredients that sort of help the vaporization go along well you know the idea is that we wanted to just stick to a cut that is essentially already in the cannabis plant you know like if, if you're if it's if it's not already in the cannabis plant you know why sh- why should you be vaporizing it so we we thought that using uh 100 pure liquid terpenes was a much better option than going with uh, polyglycol, vegetable glycerin, or uh, an MCT oil. Uh, right. Of course, you know um, the, the 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 VGPG. Uh, you know that the the old popcorn lung and and uh, the developing carcinogen story. You know that's that's been around for quite a while. Uh, but the newest trend is is mixing pens. Uh, you know, mixing uh, cannabis concentrates with MCT oil, which is uh, medium chain triglyceride, which is basically a purified coconut oil. Um, now, coconut oil is wonderful. Don't get me wrong. And MCT oil is wonderful. Don't get me wrong. Just not when you vaporize it. That's when you start to develop problems. Right. They're, they're and, find, let me just interrupt for a second. They're finding, sure. and I've been reading a lot of stuff about it, they're finding that once, uh, I guess it gets up into the 500 degree range that some of these pens are able to... Uh, uh, heat up to that that the MCT oil and, and some of the others are actually making carcinogens and it's changing the molecule due to, to the heat and it's not very good for our lungs. Interesting. I have not heard that, but, you know, I, I that would not surprise me in the least. Um, you know, my main concern with MCT oil uh, when you vaporize it is lipid pneumonia. And what that is, is, is when you're burning fats, you're, 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 you're bringing that into your lungs and that's actually combusting, you know, you're not vaporizing anything there, you know, like those fats burn, um, you know, and that's, it's also why, you know, a, a, a concentrate that's been de-waxed, uh, is better for your lungs than say a concentrate that has not been de-waxed. Um, so it's, it's kind of falls in the same realm of, of de-waxing, you know, like we, we view these, these lipids that are already in the concentrate as an impurity. And, you know, so we want to remove that, you know, um, it, and, and, you know, when these people are, are just, you know, going through the effort of making a clean concentrate and then just dumping fats and waxes back into the mix, you know, you're just exacerbating a problem. You know, it, it's uh, you're you're causing, like I said, what's known as lipid pneumonia, and you, where where your lungs are actually retaining liquid in the form of these of these uh, these fat molecules. So, so you decided to use just pure terpenes, okay? Now, uh, cannabinoid terpenes can not just come from the uh, cannabis plant or or the hemp plant. Um, there's there's other plant life out there. So I know there's a lot of companies around that are uh, extracting terpenes. Now, um, have you ever extracted your, your own terpenes? Um, no, we don't get too much into distillation. We, uh, we, we purchase our terpenes. Uh, I, I'm not exactly the, the hugest fan of, of distillate. Um, and that, that's how you um, procure terpenes from the cannabis plant. Right. So- uh, you take... So when you um, when you take when you, let's say we we all know a lot of people know about myrcene okay myrcene can be found in the cannabis plant certain strains of course and then also uh, in mangoes okay mangoes hops is another popular one all right so um, so when you get these terpenes from the terpene extractors um, how, you know in order to mix 
uh, you know, in, into your extraction, which obviously could be done, you know, by BHO or it could be done by uh, alcohol or, uh, or obviously other ways of extracting, uh, cold water, whatever. Um, you need to mix, I guess, you don't have to tell me your formula, but X amount of terpenes into the, the hash oil so that its viscosity is uh, uh, thin enough, I guess, to, to work in one of these cartridges. Is, is that pretty much what that's about? Because I'm not an expert on that. Yeah, correct. Uh, you know, we, it's a certain percentage of terpenes versus a certain percentage of uh, cannabis oil. And then there, there's a few twists and turns in there chemically that you have to, you know, reprocess and, ref and refine the, uh, the hash oil to, to make sure that it stays that consistency. Uh, because, you know, you could just add terpenes to it. And, you know, if you don't know what you're doing, you're likely to butter up inside the pan. So, crystallize. so, um, so when, when you're doing this, okay, obviously here in New Mexico, you have to use uh, the plant matter provided to you by your customer who is a licensed nonprofit producer here in New Mexico. And, Correct. And return it to them. So um, in using the, the terpenes, okay, uh, are, are most of these extractions uh, multiple strains, or are they strain specific? And when, once you do this process with the terpenes and and uh, your your extraction, um, it, does the strain? Let's say it's an indica strain. Does that hold true to its um, you know to its genetics, or do you think uh, maybe sometimes you don't know what it's going to turn out to be uh, as far well, as effect? yeah, I mean. Uh, and, and when it comes down to uh, concentrates, I try to keep everything strain specific. You know, like it's like you said, it's a medical program. You know, people get used to the certain effect of a certain strain that has the best beneficial med uh, the best but the best benefit for their particular condition. And you know, so that's why I think keeping things strain specific is is absolutely imperative. You know, like it's it's the, the patients like it, even edibles, you know, like I, I like to, to make edibles that are strain specific as well. So, um, as far as when you make your waxes and stuff, uh, and shatter and so forth for dabbing, um, mm -hmm. you know, I, I've, I've dabbed a few times, you know, I'm an old school guy, you know, uh, I had my first joint, uh, 49 years ago this summer. And nice. uh, so <laughs> happy anniversary. <laughs> well, yeah, it took me about 10 or 12 times in order to, uh, to actually feel anything. I, I, a lot of people, uh, tend to, uh, have that kind of an experience. So, uh, I guess w when dabbing, okay, this is just off the subject that we we're just talking about, but we're talking about strain specific. Um, when you dab a sativa and, uh, or an indica, are you getting, that kind of effect will, will a dab of sativa actually give you that that you know energy and and heartbeat uh, race oh absolutely yeah i mean like if 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 you're using a, a sativa you know you I'll, I'll get like a like an energy rush almost and if it's too much um you know i'll, I'll get a little bit of anxiety you know so that's possible so you should re definitely regulate uh how much you use you know and you know it's always it's always good to to moderate and you know it, it, there's the potential for um you know there's if it's if it's can we uh, no, not so, not, okay so let me ask you this i, I you know I, I sort of got lost also but uh we were talking about dabbing and but let me ask you once you add uh, terpenes uh back into the extraction uh, there is an entourage effect. You know, the terpenes and the flavonoids and the oh, all that absolutely. stuff, it, it changes. Okay, all right. Okay, yeah, yeah. for so, sure, for so, sure. So for tell sure. me, um, do you add, let, let's say, do you add just like just myrcene to uh, one of those specific strains or can you use multiple uh, terpenes? Yeah, uh, you, you can mix and match and then, you know, certain percentages of certain terpenes will have a different, effect in terms of smell and taste um so and and going just a step beyond that you know it also the the, the terpenes is what we're starting to find out is that the terpenes is what's actually governing your high quote unquote um so you know it, like the some of them will give you the munchies some of them will you know give you the giggles um you know, uh, let's say lemonine, for example, uh, has an antidepressive effect to it. Wow. So, it, it, and it, but it's, 
but it's the THC that activates your endocannabinoid receptors that makes your system, uh, the, 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 it increases the bioavailability of, of receiving these terpenes in your endocannabinoid system. I'm pretty sure I got that right. I'm no doctor or anything. But, oh, you're, um, you're not a doctor. Okay, let's, everybody, <laughs> no. uh, Ben is not a doctor, so please don't yeah. go to him and ask him to sign your papers for your renewals. Right. But, 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 uh, but yeah, and, and so, so, you know, it's, it's, it's actually the terpenes that are, is, is what's affecting us and what's giving these feelings, and it's just the amount of THC that, that you know, makes it bioavailable uh, to your endocannabinoid system. So without that THC, you know, it wouldn't have the same effect so, on your body. So and, uh, have, have you ever taken like your extraction before you add back some terpenes and try mm -hmm. the product, um, you know, without the terpenes and try it with the terpenes? And was there a um, physical or, or mental difference that you could notice or have you? Not I believe so. Uh, I believe so. You know, and, and like we're, we're working primary with, primarily with lemonine right now. That's that's our favorite um, but, uh, you know, and I, I definitely feel like, like a brighter sensation, you know, like I just feel like a little bit lighter on my feet, you know? So um, as far as the lemonine, uh, where's it coming? Not, not your source, but, uh, what plant matter is it coming from? Uh, they, they extract it from cannabis. So the lemon, so really, so what you're saying is the terpenes that you're getting, uh, are all of them from cannabis or, or some yeah, of them? Yeah. Okay, but I mean, what the mercine though? I mean, are they doing extractions from? Well, uh, every mang? every every um, every terpene, every cannabinoid has its own individual boiling point, so they're able to isolate at a certain temperature which terpenes are going to be boiling off at what certain point. Okay. Uh huh. So so lemonine is probably coming from. Uh, some super lemon haze or some of those, right, right? Right, exactly. Uh -huh. And then we can um, tailor, you know, these flavors to what um, terpenes are already prevalent in that specific strain. Ha have you have you taken a terpene like lemonine, which you say uh, is probably a more of a sativa terpene, right? Am I wrong about right. that? Okay. Ha no, have I, you I, I would... You were, Go I was going to say, have you ever put that into an indica to see what the effect was? Um, you know, yeah, I, I think we have used indica strains with lemonine before. And, you know, it, it, it seemed to have more of that, of course, the dative effect that indicas generally have. Um, but, you know, also alleviated some of that mental depression that you might get, you know, that just had that... that that couch lock drop uh -huh. seat, you know, like, um, yeah. So it, you can definitely mix and match and, you know, use these terpenes to kind of custom tailor the effect that you're looking for. Right. There's, there's actually a company out of uh, Colorado that I think I had them on the show a year or so ago, and I've seen some stuff on TV about them. They were actually, you know, testing, uh, with subjects, you know, human subjects, uh, there's certain isolated, uh, terpenes and and uh, cannabis that they were making to you know to make you feel happy or to make you feel hungry and and so forth. So, uh, right, what right. We're, what what's going to be going on? What you're going to be doing and the other scientists that are you know uh, making these products are going to be really coming up with new stuff over the next few years, and it's going to be very very exciting because you know every day uh, we're learning more and more about this plant and. Uh, it just took all this time because of, of course, the prohibition that we've been going through. So, uh, again, uh, you know, Ben, tell me where can people get your cartridges? Because there's so many uh, dispensaries out here in New Mexico and, and across the country that are just using the, uh, the PEG, the VEG, you know, all that stuff. And uh, so where can people get your uh, unadulterated, just cannabinoid uh, vape pens? Um, so you can get our products right now, uh, out of town. Um, let's see, grassroots out in grants has our pens, um, compassionate distributors in Ruidoso, uh, Carlsbad, and I think Roswell carry our, carry our pens. Um, and then in town and Albuquerque, you can get them at urban wellness 
and where else? Uh, Harvest Foundation. All those uh-huh. locations carry terpens right okay, now. Okay, now uh, your cartridge, your your tops. Okay, and and what are yours called by? What's in, what's your brand's called? Uh, for this? Uh, t- terpen. Terpen. Oh, I like that. Very cool. Yeah, terpen. it's just like terpene with the last e left off, essentially. No, I think that's a very smart idea. Very cool. Uh, so you. so um, what? How? What's the highest wattage that uh, cartridge will take before it uh, burns up? Um. I, I think there are the the standard car or, or the, the the standard batteries like a three point uh, nine watt right the mm-hmm. one that, that that everyone's using uh, well I shouldn't say everyone uh, but it, it's definitely like a, a high range um, battery it's 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 three phase so you can uh, change the temperature to three separate settings low medium high and uh do you know so what those are do you know what those are by the way what the low setting is exactly in the medium and the high or is... uh not offhand okay. I'd, I'd have to dig through my notes uh um, i just want to tell people to be careful if you're using a different type of battery like i use something called an e-leaf or a jomo and which goes right, which goes right. up to like 40 watts if you're if you're changing tops back and forth just be be really conscious of the fact that you have to lower from 20 or 30 watts down to the 3.9 or 4 that uh, these type right, of cartridges go right. on or else you'll blow them up. So um, uh, tell me, uh, before we go, what, what other, uh, you have any, listen, I'm a big fan of, of your edibles for years. They, they, they taste fantastic. They look beautiful. Packaging Thank is you. always fantastic. So uh, hey. and what's new right now and, and what edibles? And obviously, uh, some of the dispensaries that you mentioned will probably have your edibles as well. So let's talk about where people can get your stuff. Okay. Well, um, we are carried by a fair amount of producers in town. Um, let's see. Uh, I don't want to go through the list right now. Well, I don't want to talk well, about the product. Let's, let, let's, let's, say, talk let's, about say, the, um, let's talk about your lemon bars. Mm-hmm. I mean, they're, they're, Okay. They're so, yeah, kind of the <laughs> lemon bars are, of course, our, our flagship. We've been making those since the various days. And, uh, by the way, they called me back, so hopefully we'll be uh, working with them again. That'd be great. Um, yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, so um, the lemon bars are fantastic, but right now the gummies are getting just insanely popular. Mm-hmm. Like we we really put our all into these gummy products, and so we let, really feel like. Let me ask you this question, okay? Um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Do you make your gummies from scratch, or or uh, for years there's been some companies that. And there's nothing wrong with it, really, I guess, that they're getting gummies that are pre-made and then spraying them, but I don't know that it's as no, no, good no, no, no. as... All, uh, all, our, ours are all handmade. Good. Um, you know, like, like we've got like these vats um, you know, that, that, that we pour off of. They're, they're really nice. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's legit gummies. You know, it's not like just some jello concoction thrown together over the weekend. Um, you know, that, that like falls apart in your mouth and tastes of RSO, you know, it, it's, it, these, these, these gummies are absolutely fantastic. And, and right in line with every one of our other animals, you cannot taste the medicine and it tastes absolutely amazing. Like uh, well, guaranteed to love it. Apples well, to oranges with every other product. All right. So uh, people out there, uh, check out Herbal Edibles uh, at some of the dispensaries here in New Mexico that Ben just mentioned. And uh, check out the Turpin, which uh, really only makes sense to me. There's probably only uh, maybe one other company that's doing uh, the same thing without the MCT and the VEG and the PEG and the PG. And, and, uh, right, right, right. So, right. so uh, just keep uh, it as pure as possible. Ab- you know? Absolutely. Like, 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 uh, like uh, if you. If you gotta, if you gotta use CO two and 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 BHO, you know, stick with terpenes. You know, like shoving P, uh, VGPG and and MCT oil into people's lungs. You know, just for the sake of blowing uh, big puffy clouds. Well, I mean, <laughs> for the sake of compliance, really. Like, well, that is what that it boils too. Down to, uh, it, now, you know, like <laughs> is that is that going to change that seventy percent thing? Uh, well, or? I mean, come on, it passed with the with the advisory board, but so did um, well, what was it? Uh, 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 collectives. Yeah. You know, yeah. like it's so. Come on, we we both know everything attached to that collective issue is going to get vetoed. 
Right. So it's just really a shame that the, we have a, a governor that uh, you know told us ahead of time we're going to mess with your program. We're not going to yeah, let it expand. Yeah. She she ran on that platform. Yeah, right? and people voted for her. <laughs> well, you know what? We don't have much time left with her, so that's a good thing. That's right. Anyway, that's Ben, right. Herbal Edibles, thank you, buddy, for coming on and talking about your for turpins, sure, about your sure. lemon uh, bars, and uh, I, I really uh, you know I enjoy your. Uh, your friendship and your your pictures that you post, everything is just looks fantastic. So for uh, sure, man, I, I'm here for you, Larry. Anytime you need me, if you, for whatever purpose, I'm I'm available. Thanks, buddy. Me too. Uh, All right, we'll be right back after this. Well, I want to thank uh, Ben Barreras from Herbal Edibles telling us all about his Turpin. Go check him out at uh, some of the dispensaries in Albuquerque and elsewhere. Um, also, I want to thank my two radio mentors, both with the initials HS. Thank you for your inspiration. Uh, if you'd like to be a guest on the show, if you have a product, a business, a website, you're an activist, you're an advocate, um, it's info at mmjradio.com. Again, info at mmjradio.com. Uh, if you'd like to hear some of our old shows, uh, still very uh, relevant, it's uh, medicalmarijuanaradio.com or mmjradio.com. My YouTube channel is lslove88. SoundCloud is MMJ Radio, as well as Spreaker.com, MMJ Radio. CannabisTube.net, we have uh, our videos up there. 
on Spreaker and iHeartRadio. It's on the Time for Hemp Global Broadcasting Network, on Now TV Channel 937, and we're also heard on 420radio.org. Shalabat. Shalom.